Today's demonstration, we're going to be showing you how um, earthquakes sort of work out in um, the earth. Um, we have some examples of uh, household items that you could find in order to do this demonstration. So one of the things that you may need um, or could find, and they don't necessarily need to be these, but you could find things with different textures. Um, we have a plastic water jug filled with just your normal uh, water faucet. We have one of these metal pans that are going to reenact like a harder sort of surface, um, concrete or really tight, tight um, grounds. And then we have a sponge that we're going to use to simulate um, sand or a sandy surface or like the desert or something like that. Um, other things you can find at home is maybe some floor tiles, uh, your yoga mat, uh, whatever you can. Just try to contrast the hardness and the softness of each of the objects you're going to be using. And with me, I have this nice baseball. Um, it's going to be acting as our earthquake um, initiator. And so um, we're going to be measuring the different impact that this ball will make on each of the different surfaces that we have. In order to do that, um, you will have to download an application on your iPhone. I'm going to be using the HAMM, H-A-M-M, -M, uh, seismograph. Um, just download it, it's free. and. One of the options it has is whether you can view um, the magnitude at one, three, or four times its um, reading. And we're just going to be using the simple one and see how it um, differs as we move through the different objects. Um, the seismograph that will uh, show squiggly lines, and the squiggly lines will uh, dictate how much of an impact each of the surfaces has. And then one of the things that we'll also want to look at is the aftershock effect. You know, is it dissipate really fast or is it a slow dissipation as time progresses? And so we'll check that out as well. So I'm going to turn my iPhone on, um, download the seismograph, and here is what it normally looks like. And it's pretty simple. All you'll do is hit start once we're ready. So I'm going to put it on the surface itself. So I'm going to try to decide which way we want to do. And as I drop the ball, go ahead and observe the water and we'll talk about it a little bit on how it reacted. Now, obviously, the, hard, the higher you are to uh, the surface, you can put this on the ground. You don't have to do it on the table necessarily. I'm kind of tall, um, about six foot. Um, but um, the higher you are, the more force it's going to generate. So you can play around with that and see the differences as well from dropping the ball at different heights. So one of the things you want to do is make sure your phone is on and hit the start button. Get your ball, pick your height, and go ahead and drop it. Oh, and I lost it. So one of the things you'll see here is that um, we talked about the squiggly lines and you see the initial hit is really high and then it slowly dissipates and you can see um, right afterwards there's another um, kind of high reading there and that's what we call the aftershock um, and you always hear about aftershocks being spoken in earthquakes and always worried about it because it could be something that creates a little bit further damage. Now, if this earthquake happened in the ocean like we're simulating here, one of the things that we're most concerned with is tsunamis. And so initially you may get an initial wave, but because of the aftershock effect, there's always going to be some subsequent waves that come that you need to be concerned about. And depending on the distance that you are from the source of the earthquake and where you're at, um, there's going to be some time differences. And that's why we've developed, or government uh, officers have developed these tsunami alarm systems to evacuate people. Okay, so I'm going to do it one more time just to see if there's any differences. Um, I'm going to do about the same height um, and hopefully we'll see the same effect. I'm going to hit push the uh, app to get it going. Now, on this um, exercise, you can see we got the same height that we did in the initial one. Uh, we have the aftershock effect, and you'll continue to see that, and then it dissipates sort of slowly. And one of the things that uh, happens with water molecules, as you'll see when we get to maybe the Earth scenario, is that molecules in water tend to be a little bit further dispersed, and that helps to absorb any sort of shock or forces being enhanced on them. And so, um, earthquakes in the ocean 
Uh, the biggest thing that we're always worried about is the wave effect. Not so much that's going to shake a lot and drop a lot of buildings there because water has that absorption factor that it could happen. And you'll see a little bit of that when we get to the sponge on the solid surface. So now we're going to be doing uh, my metal flank, uh, frame. So this will simulate something a little bit more harder, uh, earth-like. So think about rock or um, something in that surface type. So go ahead and put it over the plate. Let it stabilize. And I'm going to use about the same height level. So you can see there was not a lot of absorption and barely moved. But uh, one of the things I also want to show you, uh, you see the initial um, shock pretty high and get a little bit more concentrated. Whereas if you remember with the water source, there was a little bit of squiggly lines and it dissipated a little bit more slowly. You also see a little bit of the aftershock as well. And so that um, dictates based on how close the molecules are in the rock surfaces versus the water. So um, kind of cool to see that. Now, one of the things that we're always worried about on solid earth, and you probably have heard some of the uh, earthquakes, and you can look up the Northridge earthquake uh, from about 20 years ago. And um, right before that, there was an Oakland earthquake here in California, and you could see some of the damage that it causes at cities uh, because you know we put so much concrete all over the place, and concrete doesn't absorb very well um, shocks from larger uh, magnitude quakes. Um, and the last uh, demo we're gonna do is I have a sponge here uh, from my washing my car, and we're gonna do the same thing and compare to the other two surfaces. So I'll go ahead and put my phone on there. We'll get started. So on this effect, you can see that the ball just straight right rolled out, uh, but you can see, you know, initially it's about the same force, but the force quickly dissipated and absorbed it. And one other thing you could notice here is that there isn't much of an aftershock on this one as compared to the solid surface and even the water surface. And that's because the sponge will absorb most of the force coming through from the ball and there won't be that effect. And so earthquake centers around deserts or sand bit areas tend to not spread out as much um, versus uh, earthquakes that are um, inland um, that do tend to spread out and you're able to feel them you know 200 miles 150 miles away from the surface depending how big uh, they are in order to see how earthquakes are affected in the magnitude throughout the world the u.s geological uh, survey has a website where you can go in and look at where the most recent earthquakes happen in the world, in California, and any given place. So um, grab a computer, make sure you're connected to the internet, and we're going to load up up to uh, earthquake.us.gov, and I'll have the link down here on our screen, and you could go ahead and um, see some of the attributes that it has. And it's kind of neat to see that there's earthquakes going on every 15 or 20 minutes or so, uh, maybe even more often if you look at like the Pacific Rim, um, Southeast Asia, but here in California, you'll probably see that an earthquake more than likely happened within the last hour or so. Um, other things that you'll see on the website is some of the major faults around the world, and you could talk about the big fault that we have here in California that it seems to be always talked about during earthquakes, which is the San Andreas Fault. Um, and it travels north-south, um, just west of here, Bakersfield, about oh, 30 or so miles um, out in the Carrizo Plain. Um, so hopefully you guys learned a little bit more about earthquake, have now a fun exercise to do at home and compare and see the different um, surfaces and how they could absorb force and uh, learn a little bit more about some of the natural occurrences that happen to us here in California.